Hey tubers, it's another gorgeous day in the middle of March. Uh, today's Thursday the 11th of March and it's almost 60 degrees out here in western New York. Everything's melting. Snow all fell off the roof so I had to shovel the path. But I thought since it's so nice out, we're going to start working on the Briggs & Stratton ZH. Um, I'm gonna, first thing I want to do is see if I can get some spark to it. Um, i got to pull the flywheel off which might be a challenge. Um, the spark plug is broken off. I think it got tipped over. The uh, choke linkage was bent. I straightened that already. The uh, governor needs to be connected. We're going to take this flywheel off. I've never worked on one of these before, but that is really rusty. I'm assuming you take that big nut off to get the flywheel off. And then these two bolts here on the outside probably hold on this pulley slash starter rope start pulley um, looks like there's a tooth missing off the flywheel here a cooling fin I'll probably have to break one off of this side and the reason you do that is to keep it balanced when it runs it helps to keep it balanced obviously there's a w part of a weight missing here and not you know anywhere else so it won't be perfect but if you break one off 180 degrees right straight across from it it helps keep it somewhat balanced so I'll uh, get some penetrant on here and get this nut off and uh, see if I can't get the flywheel off. Well, the air impact and a little blaster make quick work of the nut and bolts and the pulleys off. And now, many people will just jam a chisel or a screwdriver back in here, you know, maybe one on each side and then pound the heck out of this. Well then, you risk doing two things. One, you risk busting something when you're prying back here and two you risk messing up the end of these threads now this one in particular and most larger engines anyway have two threaded holes sometimes three in a star or in a triangle pattern that's for a puller now I don't really have a puller but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a piece of flat plate or angle to go across here with two holes in it and then you just put the bolts back in here on each side put a little tension on there and tap right in the middle on the plate and you usually will pop that right off. So we're going to give that a shot. All right, I got my piece of steel on here <clears> that already had a hole on this side. So I just drilled a hole here, using this for a pattern. And uh, bolts weren't long enough, so I had a couple uh, manifold studs that were the same fine thread inside and their coarse thread outside. But we're going to try to just put the impact on here and see if it's going to move. If it doesn't, I'll tap on it with a hammer. Look at that. That wasn't even on there. So, that's slick. I probably could have just got it off of there just by prying it with a screwdriver because it wasn't really on there very well. But, um, like I said, it didn't take me too long to make that plate since it already had one hole in it. And, um, that way you don't risk damaging anything. Let's pull this flywheel off here and see what's inside. It's going to be new for me because I've never seen inside here. Keep these bolts separate. Oh! Well, that's an interesting looking setup. Look at that. I'm assuming that those are magnets. That's a magnet. They're both magnets. Well, that is definitely an interesting magneto if I've ever seen one. Huh. Well, the points work. So, hopefully the magneto's not burned out. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. Never seen anything like that before. <laughs> that's old. I bet you don't get a set of points like that right at Napa. Huh. Well, I'm going to get my meter out. 
do some checking on that and see what uh, if it's open or not. Hopefully it's the windings are good and it just needs some cleaning up. My boss said this motor did used to run. Um, they had it on a go-kart or something when they were younger, when they were kids. So we'll see if uh, the mag's all right. Good news. According to the meter, the mag is all right. Now the points are open. Uh, the points are closed. The points are closed. It's not a direct short, so the points are got to be filed, and they are really cut. That's showing 1.7 ohms to ground, which is not a direct short. A direct short is zero. So I'm showing 1.7 ohms, so it's not a direct short on the low volt on the low side. And if I leave that in there, we'll go up here to the high voltage wire. We get 2.3 K. So it's not shorted to ground, and it's not open. So hopefully that means it's going to make some electricity. I'm going to clean the points off, take it off, take the points off, clean everything all up. Probably take this off, the mag off of here, polish it up, make sure everything's connecting the way it's supposed to. And this wire here is a little uh, iffy. It's soldered to that, I believe, and it's it's really in bad shape. The condenser is probably no good, but uh, we'll take it off and see. So.